For staying with us here at 730, there was a discussion, a debate last night at Charlotte City Council that we thought was worth revisiting tonight in detail. It's worth hearing what people had to say. It had to do with adding penalties back in over certain ordinance violations. Think panhandling, urinating in public, sleeping in parks and other places. It's hit or miss at this shopping center on Little Rock Road. Shoppers say sometimes the coast is clear, other times it's not. Neighbors sent me these pictures of people sleeping in front of a business, a mattress found in front of another, and a person relieving himself just inches from where customers walk. You don't want to stand there and watch somebody doing this, but you know what they're doing and you just go on. That was part of a report from our Dedrick Russell back in the fall. There has been frustration building over those kinds of acts, and it goes back actually to 2021 when state lawmakers passed a law decriminalizing a lot of those behaviors. But that law also gave cities the option to make violations misdemeanors. Charlotte didn't do that. And over the past year or so, complaints began to rise, notably in Uptown. This is a photo of the Little Free Library in our Fourth Ward Park next to a bench where parents and grandparents sit with their children as they teach them to read and explore the wonders of books. No parent should have to make a, a choice of whether to read with their children or to avoid raw human waste. I'll show you this chart here from Mecklenburg County's Quality of Life Explorer. It shows disorder related calls over the years. We're talking public intoxication, fighting, disturbing the peace, drug possession, those kinds of things. It captures some of what we are talking about here. This pink line here at the top shows the calls in the center city. The blue line here, that's countywide, the average. The trend, as you'll note here, was actually down in 2020, 2021 during the pandemic. But here at the end, in 2022, it shot back up. And in some of those cases, because of the law, police weren't able to do much about it. So that is the backdrop to last night's meeting, where council was deciding whether to reinstate criminal penalties for some of these things. The discussion was difficult at times. You had the frustration of residents and business owners side by side with the concerns of advocates that the unhoused, our poor, our most vulnerable, could be charged because they have nowhere to go. Just this past Sunday, a woman walked in our congregation and I could tell she was in great distress during worship and I asked her what she needed and she looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, I just need a place to rest. Is there just somewhere where I can sleep? And we let her, we brought her to a place, a quiet room while services were going on and while we have our after service gatherings and Sunday school. But after that was over, we had to make her go out on the street because your fire marshal told us that if anybody is living or sleeping in our building, you'll disconnect us from the electric grid. CMPD are not properly trained, trained to deal with poor people with mental health issues. I am sick and tired of the council women and men of color discriminating against people of color. We are talking about human beings, not animals that you commit to a cage. Several weeks ago, I saw a young lady who works downtown walking along through that same Fourth Ward Park on a Friday afternoon. She walked past a large group of men who were drinking beers from toilet packs, even though it was nearly it was early afternoon on a weekday. As she walked past them, they drunkenly leered at her, catcalling and harassing her, taunting her about her attire and asking for her name. She did her best to play it off, but she was obviously feeling uncomfortable, unsafe, and objectified, and moved quickly out of her own park, our park. No one should have to walk through a gauntlet of toxic drunkenness because our city leaders are allowing that to persist. I'm just going to state what I've seen over the last couple of years and how things have changed and progressively gotten worse. Um, in front, of, in front of my place, I've seen people getting congregating, getting into fights, arguing with each other, threatening each other's lives, starting things on fire, and naturally putting things at risk. I've also gotten my, my property damage. I've seen people try to break, walk into my, my home. Um, and, and those are the things that have made me nervous about what's going on. It's not an anti-homeless account, but this is just what's happened. Council members took it all in before having their say on the issue that is without a doubt complex. And so the ordinance is a no for me, but I did do and try to work with my colleagues on an amendment that failed. So I want everybody 
that sent me these hateful emails that said, I hate the police. Clearly don't know that uh, Sheriff Gary McFadden is my, one of my best and closest mentors. Okay? I go into jail. I work every day. What is not going to happen to me as the newest member on the block, I'm not going to be bullied. I think a false choice is being presented to the community and to all of us in this conversation. A choice between criminalizing homelessness or accepting that defecation and urination outside our homes and the eyesight of our children is an either uh, or statement. We have to figure out which side of that argument we're on. And I refuse to accept those are the only options before us. I think it's actually unfair to homeless people who, who do not commit these behaviors That's to right. be included in terms of who is being victimized by the idea of criminalizing this. We are talking about behaviors. The other thing I, I think is, uh, is sort of remarkable is it sounds as if everybody thinks that we are having to choose enforcement versus engagement, and that in fact we aren't engaged, that we are sitting here contemplating enforcement and we have no care at all and we don't in engage. And the truth is the engagement of the city is and has been huge. Tens and hundreds of millions of dollars, programs, ARPA funds. We are racking our brains trying to figure out how to solve this, what to do about it. I supported the recommendation that Councilmember Johnson attempted to introduce to everyone, and that is let's implement all of the programming first mm -hmm. and then look at this enforcement because there is a reason that a lot of this enforcement was rolled back. And if we, we already know that there are, of which we heard it from our attorney as well, there are legal cases that are already being presented based on interpretation of the language. Let's work on addressing the issue versus the additional enforcement because we still got a lot of training and a lot of work that we need to do within our law enforcement. Important conversation had last night. We thought it was worth listening to. In the end, council voted seven to three to recriminalize six ordinances, soliciting from the street, drinking from open containers, trespassing on motor vehicles, masturbation in public, urination and defecation on prohibited property, and sleeping in parks. Now, the city has invested in some portable bathrooms uptown and more are on the way. As for CMPD, police support the return of these penalties, but have also said they will be used as a last resort.